Hi, my name is Janine Weisbos. Welcome to this practical on resting state data analysis using the network modeling approach as implemented in FSLNets. This practical will be a little bit different from the other FSL practicals because instead of using the normal command line or FSL GUIs, we will be using Python. I'm going to show you some of the practical sections in Amazon Workspace. And I'm also going to link some of the concepts in the practical back to the lecture. The first section of the practical talks us through some of the steps we need to perform before running FSL nets. These boxes are in red because we don't recommend that you run these because they take a long time to complete. Therefore, we've already performed these steps for you. As you can see, the first box, we define the nodes using melodic. And then in the second box, we extract the time series using dual regression. Going back to the lecture, this relates to the topics we discussed in the second episode of the lecture. Given that we'll be using ICA as implemented in Melodic, this means that our node will be non-contiguous and our nodes will also be weighted, i.e. we'll be working with the soft parcellation. In addition, using ICA to define nodes means that we're using a data-driven parcellation instead of a functional atlas. The steps that we are going to implement and work through during the practical talk us through how to estimate edges. And we're going to look at differences between full and partial correlation. Let's have a look at the start of the practical. This box in gray means that I need to run the command in the command line, so I can copy and paste it. Enter. As you can see from the prompt having, prompt having changed here, we are now working in Python. The rest of the boxes are all in orange, which means they get run in the command line window after opening up Python. This first command is just loading the package that we're doing. And again, I can just copy and paste it. This next section is about network estimation. The first command loads in all the data, which includes all subjects and all nodes with one resting state functional MRI time series per subject per node. Now that we've loaded this data into the workspace, we can interrogate it. For example, we can have a look at the variable TS, which includes information regarding the data that was used to, that was just loaded in. Several of the commands in this practical will generate figures for us to look at. For example, here I've generated one of the figures showing the spectra of the node time series. Please note that some of the figures will take a few minutes to generate, so don't worry if it doesn't show straight away. The practical instructions will let you know about warnings that can be ignored and estimated processing times for commands when relevant. So please read the instructions carefully. The figures in this practical are a little different from what we're used to. Here, we won't be using fossilized to open brain maps because we're not working in brain space anymore. Instead, we're doing a node-based analysis and looking at characteristics of time series and edges. Because the figures are a little bit different, the practical includes clickable information to learn more about the figures. We encourage you to look at this and think about the results. If you're attending an in-person course or uh, an online course, this is also a really good opportunity to engage with the tutors. You really do gain most from this course by asking questions and interacting with the tutors. This next section talks about cleaning up the data. This is relevant for a data-driven approach because some group level nodes might be noise nodes despite careful cleanup during the individual data pre-processing stage. This is because residual noise can be detectable at the group level after combining data across many subjects. The first command here defines the node numbers that are classed as signal and should be kept. And then in the second command, the noise components are removed from the data. The next section calculates the network matrices or netmats. Here we're calculating both the full and partial correlation netmats so that we can compare them directly. For the partial correlation netmats, we are applying a bit of regularization as we discussed during the lecture. Once we've generated the netmats for all participants, we can look at group level summaries in the next section. This first command will show you the group average netmat. In this next command, we'll plot the network hierarchy this part of the practical relates to section three of the lecture about group level analysis, where we included the hierarchical clustering results. The next section of the practical looks at statistical comparisons. For example, 
the netsglm command will run a gen general linear model in the same way we've seen many times during the FSL course. But in this case, it will fit the same model separately for each of the edges. The results figure displays one minus the GLMP values for the network matrix. As you can see, most of these values are blue, indicating that the p-values were close to one, and therefore the edges did not differ significantly between patients and controls. The figure shows one of the edges has a p-value below 0.05 after correction for multiple comparisons. We can interrogate this result a little further using the next steps in the practical. The last section of the practical is optional and shows you how to perform a multivariate rather than univariate analysis using machine learning to try and predict which subjects are patients and which subjects are controls. If this is of interest to you, to you we would encourage going through these steps. To wrap up, we hope you enjoyed this practical. If you're attending an organized FSL course, please make sure to ask the tutors lots and lots of questions, which will help you learn and make the whole experience more fun. Thanks.